If you believe if you get some money or wealth, your life is settled, not in time for yoga. All these things make some convenience happen in our life, but doesn't really transform us in any way. If you understand this one thing, and now yoga, yoga pursuit of spiritual process will not work as a sedative for the population, but will act as an invigorating force. So, uh, whether you have one or ten, the human child is not born like other creatures. The moment you drop them, they run around and find their food and run away. Any other creature, let's say a tiger is born, ninety percent he is ready-made, only ten percent the mother or father has to teach them a little bit, only ten percent. Ninety percent it's all inbuilt for him. Everything he needs to know about his life is there within him. With a human child, Ninety percent you have to teach and groom, otherwise it won't happen. If you don't do the right things, a child can come up like an animal. So, this is not because of one child or ten children, it is the nature of people that how people are attached to their children, their idea of well-being is to pour them with gifts. Well, if you really want your children to be well, you must give them strength in body, in mind, in emotion, in energy. If you give them lot of strength and stability, wherever they go, they will be well. If you just give them money, when they lose it, they're lost. They just don't lose their money. If somebody loses their money, people think they've lost their life and they want to kill themselves, isn't it? A lot of times, not just in one place, everywhere. Because they think the moment they lose their money, they have lost their life. No, if you lost money, time for yoga. This is why Patanjali started the Yoga Sutras, which is a tremendous document on life with half a sentence. If you still believe that by getting married or unmarried, your life will become fulfilled, not a time for yoga. If you believe if you get some money or wealth, your life is settled, not a time for yoga. If you believe if you build a new home or buy a new car, life will be fulfilled, not a time for yoga. If you know all these things make some convenience happen in our life, but doesn't really transform us in any way. If you understand this one thing, and now yoga. So, time has come for China and now yoga. Time has come. Only thing is <laughs> You have to make the authorities realize it's now and now yoga. We can make uh, political commentaries about China, about this, about that. But all said and done, this is the only society which has moved a billion people from utter abject poverty to reasonable levels of well-being in a matter of two generations in fifty years' time. Nowhere… nowhere has it ever happened. Right now India is sitting on such a threshold, what China did with great force, India could do it democratically, we are sitting on the threshold, but still there are distance to walk. We still need to walk the distance. So, we can give commentaries about this and that and many things about freedom, freedom of speech, freedom of yoga, freedom of pursuing my own goals and stuff. But you must understand your present well-being has happened because as a consequence of forceful determination by somebody, 
Keeping a whole generation in abject conditions of poverty is a worse crime than forcefully doing a few things. So, for China, the time for yoga has come. Not the twisting, turning yoga that's becoming popular there. Real yoga, yoga means to obliterate the boundaries of your individuality. Right now, you must understand this, a nation like China has grown because of a strong sense of, this is what we will do, determined approach towards the nation. Now that those goals are achieved, slowly relaxing that must happen, I think they're doing it. But still, to benefit this generation, it may not be fast enough. So, it needs to happen, not by protest, not by doing this and that, but bringing better understanding in the minds of those who administer the nation, that this will not work like opium of the past. Because you must understand this, the religions of the past were described as the opium, because they were, they were putting people to sleep. So yoga, pursuit of spiritual process will not work as a sedative for the population, but will act as an invigorating force. This understanding must be brought to those who administer that nation. That is the way to take it forward, not by protests, not by threatening their… some sense of stability they have created for the nation, by threatening that you are not going to get anywhere. So, about you being the only child, because your parents were prevented from having two, they gave you two children's food to you. That's happening worldwide. Most children, if you look at them, it looks like they ate two or three children's food. <laughs> look at our children, squawny and nicely growing up, because we make them burn. Every ounce they eat, they must burn <laughs> in their stomach. <laughs> uh, this is happening across the world. Children who come from affluent societies, obviously their mothers wanted to have three, four, five children, but they had only one or two. So all that five children's food, they want to feed all of them into one investment. <laughs> so on all levels from food to toys to wealth to everything else, this is happening. Another reason is, this is the first generation or the second generation which is seeing both the parents going off to work, not just working around the house, going away to work somewhere else. So how to keep the child engaged, throw some gadgets at them, keep them busy with some video game, it doesn't matter, they're shooting everybody in the world <laughs> But uh, give them many things so that before they open their mouth and complain, throw more things and more things and more things, because parents are feeling guilty that I am not spending enough time with my child. This has a, become a universal problem. The only way to handle their guilt is every day when they're coming back from office, pick up one gift and throw it in the child's hand, so child doesn't complain and goes on. This is not the way to do things. We need to find solutions for this. We need to find ways that children at least will grow up in a community. You can love them for thirty days in a year as much as you want, rest of the time they're in a place where they will be treated as sensible creatures, not as pampered nonsense <laughs> I would like to see a lot of Chinese children in Sanskriti